nuts with a 22 millimeter socket. Take off all these little caps that hold this big cap that hides the lug nuts. <laughs> Now, also with a 22 millimeter socket, remove all eight of your lug nuts. And remove the wheel. I'm gonna start by disconnecting the ABS sensor so I can get more slack on this wiring harness. There's another connector up here. Oh. That one's broken, the wire pops right out, I guess. Just leave it like this. That's a lot of extra slack. Let's disconnect this 10 millimeter bolt for the brake hose. Yep, that broke a lot of times these brakes, so we'll have to resecure it in a different way. That's fine. But now we have extra slack on both of these, so we can move on to disconnecting the ball joint. With an 18 millimeter socket, go ahead and take this nut off. And leave it on a couple threads, that way when we break the ball joint free, the knuckle doesn't go flying. Now carefully hammer on the knuckle right here to break it free from the studs. There we go. With the pry bar, I'm going to pry the control arm back down so I can remove pressure off the nut, remove the nut. And then as I bring this up, keep in mind that when the ball joint pops out, the knuckle's going to want to come forward. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold it. There we go. Let's take out the mounting bolts, 21 millimeter wrench on the bolt side and a 21 millimeter socket on the nut side. Go ahead and break this free. It shouldn't be too, too tight. Memorize where the alignment shims are. That way you can put them back the same way when you're done. You'll need an alignment after this, but this will at least get you close. The bolt is spinning, that's good, because a lot of times these will seize up inside of the bushing. All right, take these shims off. You can push the bolt through. It'll go through a slot in the spring tower here, but I'm gonna leave it in for now until we remove the other bolt. That way at least this part is being held onto the frame. On the front side here, you'll see a similar setup, except the bolt head is actually inside of the spring tower here. A little more difficult to access, but you can put a wrench on it, hold it in place. And this one, you can either use a wrench or some combination of tool that you can get in here and remove the nut. Get my wrench off, remove the camber alignment shim, push the bolt through, try to fish the bolt out from inside here going to require some twisting and turning just by feel because you won't be able to see it. Oh, there it is. There's one bolt. Now you can take out the other one. This one's going to be much easier. Set that aside and you can remove your upper control arm. There we go. Now we can replace the bushings. So we have to press this bushing out. And obviously it only comes out one way, which is that way, it's got a lip here. If you have a tool that can uh, grab onto here and basically create a larger area, maybe a seal puller like this, and you clamp it down, and then you can use a ball joint cup over it, go ahead. I do have the tool, but mine is unfortunately broken, which is why I can't use it at the moment. So what I'm going to do instead, which you might end up doing um, since it'll be more convenient if you don't have the tool, is actually cutting this bushing here so I can have access to this part of the control arm so I can put a ball joint cup on it and press the rest of the bushing up and through. Unfortunately, I can't do that if I have this slip in the way. So let's uh, give this a shot, cut it. <coughs>
And now with the end piece gone, I put a ball joint press here with a cup and I'm going to try and press the bushing out. a little bit. Now I have this bushing set up in my hydraulic press here where the press is going to press the bushing down into this cup. So let's give it a shot. I know it's going to press out the center first but that's going to have to happen. Okay, that's it. There it is. We'll clean up this area here so that the new bushing can press in nice and smooth and we will press the new bushing in. You can clean this up with a wire brush, some sandpaper. Um, it shouldn't be too rusted. If it's rotted, then I would just obviously replace the control arm, which I suggest to begin with. But if you still just want to do bushings, make sure it's nice and clean. Now with this area cleaned, it's uh, time to install the new bushing, which goes in like so, with the outer part towards the outside of the control arm and it presses down and in. And I'm only doing one at a time because I'm using the old one as a reference to how much this needs to go in. Um, you can't put it in too far and you can't leave it out too much, otherwise things won't line up. So make sure you go by this. We will need a cup to receive the new bushing on the bottom as it gets pressed in. And I'm going to use the same cup that I used to press it out because it the same size because it fits perfectly. Get the new bushing in here and then when you press the bushing in you want to press on this outer ring. You don't want to press on the inside uh, because you don't want to damage the rubber. Obviously when we were taking the old one out nobody cares so um, you're replacing it. That's why you're taking it out. So you can press anywhere but to put it in press on the outer ring on the outer sleeve here. That way you don't damage it. Center it up in your press or you can use a ball joint press. Anything you have. Since I have it set up in here, I'm just going to go ahead and use this. Make sure you're pressing as straight as possible. It will correct itself if it's very, very slightly off, but obviously you don't want to be at a severe angle. So, All right, let's see what this does. There we go. That just corrected itself a little bit. And it should go in nice and smooth with no um, forceful pressure. I'm going to eyeball it at first and then once it gets close, I'm going to stop and measure to make sure that I am stopping where I need to stop. Okay, right about here. Seems like it is perfectly centered where it needs to be. I'm going to measure it to make sure that I actually do have it right, but this to me looks perfect. Okay, so I measured. This is exactly where it needs to be. Now we'll do the same to this side and then we can reinstall the control arm. Get your control arm and slide it in here. Use a rubber mallet. Try to line up the bolt holes the best you can. Now let's get the bolts back. Try to wiggle this around to line it up. You can um, grease up the shank of the bolt if you want. That usually helps keep it less rusty in the future. this part on. Make sure that the slot matches up with the notches, the little tabs in the frame, and of course the mounting nut. I'm just going to bring it close so that this stays in place without falling. Let's do the same to the front side. This side is just a little bit trickier because you have to fish the bolt in behind the spring. There we go. Put the outer cam on, and finally the mounting nut. Now to tighten up this control arm, I want to hold it right about here at right height. If you don't do this, uh, you're going to torque the bushings at the wrong angle and then they'll prematurely wear. So I'm going to stick a pry bar in the spring like this to hold the control arm up at about this level. This is where it was um, before we took the bolts out. So 
I'm just going to tighten it at this height. Start by snugging this one up. Now the front one was in the position that I wanted it for the alignment cam bolts. This one was right about here. So just make sure that you uh, make them line up approximately to how they were before. Again, you will need an alignment, but you want to get it close. That way you don't wear out your tires prematurely. That's snug. Let's uh, get the torque wrench and the torque is 129 foot pounds for both of these nuts. And that's two. Now you can remove the pry bar. There we go. This is nice and tight. Now I have a pry bar in the spring tower here, pressing on the control arm so I can get this ball joint into the knuckle. Line it up, press it down. Sometimes you'll have to pull it forward a little bit to make it line up fully. Hold it down there, start on the new castle nut, we'll bottom it out and then torque it to 37 foot pounds. Now, make sure your carpet slot lines up with the hole in the castle nut. If it doesn't, always tighten, never loosen. And then go ahead, slide your cotter pin through. And then of course, bend it over to lock it in. At this point, assuming your bolt didn't break here, you would go ahead and put it back in. Like I said, mine did, so I'm just gonna take a nice thick wire tie and secure this brake hose tight. Cut off the excess, and over here, re-secure the ABS wire into the control arm, as well as up here onto the spring tower. Let's get the wheel back on. Start on all of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and then torque them to 140 foot-pounds. Don't forget about the cover, that covers the lug nuts. Do this by hand because these plastic nuts here, um, or covers, I guess, that screw on, you can, you can break them very easily if you use a, an air gun on them. So just make them snug, just enough to hold on this cap. That's all you need to do. Okay, take it for a road test.